When I was um, a child living in Chicago in the 80s, I lived near a small cinema, and that cinema called The Three Penny showed a film called The Quiet Earth, which was a science fiction film that really captivated me visually and just the, the ideas of being al alone in the world because of some cataclysmic, clearly nuclear-related um, event, a catastrophic event. And so I had, I think, in mind that film to some degree. And then, I, of course, I realized that it was a, new, a film from New Zealand, which is not something I ever knew until I started to think about coming here. that normally happen in post-production as far as sound, meaning voiceover and scoring of the film in terms of music and effects all happened live in the gallery space and they happen differently every single day. So you might hear um, Rihanna over the final scene in one version and in another it might be a section of Bach or the Mari instrumentalist. very interested in a kind of a suggestive environment psychologically and using architecture to create a kind of sense of emotional direction and historical reference and also maybe even future reference if that's even possible. Um, but I'm not terribly interested in specificity as far as that goes and I, I felt like keeping in mind the things that had happened most recently in New Zealand that are connected to the earth, to the landscape, and feelings of um, being out of control or being in control. And actually my recent experience shooting Black Moon and the feeling of being out of control in terms of one's own economic um, stability and the house that you live in and the sort of safety and security of that, all of those things were in my mind when I came here and was thinking about it. But my way of working is usually not to do something that's directly topical, um, but to kind of um, go in through a, a more aesthetic, um, aesthetically driven kind of side door and um, be evocative and have the work be evocative and suggestive without being explicit. When I thought about the architecture that um, Athfield architects were making, and I thought about the politics of the time, they somehow seemed to be quite embedded, and I came across that, I guess, somewhat famous photograph of the capsule or the tower of Ath's own home in Kandala, and the text that says, keep New Zealand nuclear free, that was painted on there in, in protest as an as a act of public protest. And I think it, it all sort of came together for me, my interest in his architecture and my interest in these other things just in that one in that one photograph. The thing that attracted me is the sense of the past and the and the future enfolded simultaneously in a structure, so that somehow this structure is pointing backward and and forward at once. That there's something organic and science fiction like about the bubble skylights and the whitewashed forms like spaceships about to take off. But at the same time, there's a real presence of kind of colonial post and beam, and wood and cedar, and um, it seems to point backward to a different New Zealand, a kind of early New Zealand of the 1800s, as much as it looks way into the future, into a kind of um, idealized, futuristic landscape. I think of the people in winter as just small groups that are inhabiting the different houses that Ath built around New Zealand and that they're sort of reflecting what those activities could be or giving an image, a kind of almost tableau-like image, almost like a painting of, of the period, but the period is the future. So again, there's a kind of sense of, a, of a, almost his, like a history painting, but it's a history in the future.